Hey, what up guys? This is David with Pharmacady TV, and today we're going to talk a little bit about lights. So these here are just your standard fluorescent fixtures. They're a T5, so they're going to put out a stronger, more intense light than the ones that you're going to have in your house. Uh, I believe those are T8s maybe, or T9, something like that. Definitely not a housing lighting expert. Um, but with our lights in here, the blue spectrum is the type of bulb that we've got plugged in here. And you can see here it's got this nice white, uh, bluish type of look to it. Um, what we're looking for is to keep the internodal spacing tight on our veg plants. So what does that mean? Take a look at this plant here. In our nodes are the spots where we have a new little side shoot coming out. So all the way up this plant we have nodes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nodes on this little guy here. And you can see they're only spaced maybe an inch apart at the furthest. This means that the lighting is giving a good job. They're not too close or too far away. And then we know that they're gonna grow at a fast rate without too much stretching. Now, the reason we don't want stretching in veg plants is that it's gonna cause a very floppy, elongated flower. It's gonna be very tall and not produce a lot of bud. Now, with these lights, they don't have maybe the best penetration, as you would say. Something like this, which is a metal halide. So these bulbs here were what they originally were vegging with in this instance and they switched them out because they produce a lot of heat. Now, personally, I love vegging under metal halide, but when you're looking at power consumption and you're looking at modern methods with this scale of growing, it can be a little bit cost ineffective. So if you look across the canopy, they've done some pruning and they've done some training, but the lighting being spread four foot long by, I think they're roughly two feet wide, gives you a really nice panel of lighting. Now the ones on the outside are gonna get slightly different light. So as they're being cycled and or even just rotated out as they're being transplanted, pruned, etc., we're gonna get better lighting even throughout. Now the benefits of something like a metal halide where you've got a lot more heat output, you've got a lot more power consumption, you also have a much stronger light. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is that not all these leaves are really big. We've got some nice fan size leaves here, uh, hand size I should say leaves. However, all the smaller leaves, which are still very healthy, vibrant, quick growing plants, um, they don't have the same size because the intensity of the light uh, it doesn't produce or cause them to reach out in the same ways. So essentially, the stronger light's gonna push them to grow a little bit faster. Uh, you're gonna get potentially a little bit thicker stalks. You're gonna have very similar internodal spacing. Uh, however, in a scale of this size, the difference may only be a few days difference in terms of its speed of growth. Uh, and how big your fan leaves are doesn't really affect how much weed you're going to be putting out in the long run. A question I get asked a whole lot about is what do I do for cloning? I burnt them or they got too dry. Often people are way over lighting their veg plants, or pardon me, often people are way over lighting their clones. As you can see here, this is just under lighting for desk. Nothing specific to plants, just little LED lights. We've got a whole, it's a few hundred of them here on little strips and they're inside a housing. You can tell here we've got them roughly a foot and a half, 18 inches from the light, uh, producing more than enough to give nice solid roots. Uh, these were cut on two, three. Let's see if we've got any roots in here. Well, it's moving. Let's see. Yeah. Similarly, you can go with something a little bit stronger. This would be a, the weakest example. Over here, we've got T5 lights again. However, these we have stretched much further off. Again, 18 inches, potentially even two foot uh, away from the plants. The nice thing about this light is that we can put a lot more under here. Uh, and they're getting, getting even lighting. As you saw, these are a little bit older and some of them had better roots than others. These are going to light a little bit more. Uh, these are going to root a little bit more aggressively with more consistent lighting. However, if we had these plants tucked right up against the top, which I often see in many grows, you may still have some roots, but you're often gonna have much more stressing and yellowing and heat issues inside the dome. Keeping the space, keeping an even lighting zone is gonna give you much healthier, consistent clones every time. When you're looking at converting a small space, T5 fluorescents are an excellent source because they don't offput too much heat and they use a minimum amount of energy. Especially when you're doing veg plants and you have a minimum amount of electricity available. For flower, you wanna utilize as much as you can because that's where the money's at. In this stage, if you can get by with using T5s and get nice, consistent vegetative growth getting ready for the flower, you'll maximize the amount of power available to you and still have beautiful, healthy, and vibrant plants. So cannabis lighting and flower is very important. The biggest thing that we're looking for is the strength of light and penetration and the amount of area it's gonna cover. 
One of the biggest things that was going on in early LED technology was it could produce vibrant color and high quality buds, but the penetration of the light wasn't very deep. These long standing double ended HPS bulbs and systems are what most growers have used and many commercial growers have used for a long time. Reason being, they're consistent, they're long lasting, they produce a very sun-like pattern in terms of the light structure and they disperse excellently. They also have a very small footprint in terms of how much space they take up if you're using it in a greenhouse where you need the light. Now with today's modern LED technology, many lights, much smaller than this even, can produce a very similar quantity and quality of light. 